Well, welcome everyone to another episode of the Legends Vodcast here on Eurosport. And today I am joined by uh, two epic figures in the game of tennis uh, that have buildings and grounds named after them. A sneaker is named after one. So first, Billie Jean King uh, is with me. Billie Jean, thank you so much for, for joining us here on Eurosport. Uh, I'm going to come back and ask you how you are. Stan Smith, an old friend of mine, is also uh, on the line. So Stan, thank you. Uh, I know, Billie Jean, you are in New York uh, at the US York Open. City. Just tell us, how is the, the feeling for you being there with under the circumstances? It's very difficult because we can't go and watch. You know, it's, it's just, what, six or seven miles away, and we can't watch. So uh, we're watching a lot on television when we can when we're not working. Um, but it's, it's different. It's really different. And it's, um, I've been going there since I was 15, in 1959. So you can imagine that it's a shock to my system. But more importantly, you know, we've really done a good job with COVID. You know, the Governor Cuomo has done a wonderful job. We're like at point. 0.24 now we have to stay under one or else we go back to shutdown so uh everyone's out but everyone's wearing masks it's it's just it's just uh, surreal really uh stan you are down in uh, hilton head uh you you have your own tennis academy how how are things there are they sort of coming back to well, normal when it comes to business i think that we're trying to do everything to keep the kids apart as much as possible and uh not going to the gym inside but uh other than that, it's working out pretty well. It's amazing. Oh, you too. Always promoting the game of tennis that uh, I'm assuming you guys are both uh, very thankful to the game that given, given you guys that platform uh, that you have used. Uh, Billie Jean, you, you won uh, 12 Grand Slam singles titles. You won 39 total slam titles, former world number one. When, when we talk about the, the, your uh, uh, merits, what comes first to you? Is it wins? Is it world number one? Uh, is it the fight for equality? Is it the, the match against Bobby Ricks? What, what are you most proud of? I think about many things, Matt, but the, thing, the two things that I love, is I grew up in team sports. So everything with me is team, like Fed Cup, uh, world team tennis, mixed doubles, doubles. Uh, those are... It's all about relationships uh, and of course uh, to be able to create a platform to compete to play and of course now using our platform of sports to help positive change yeah no for sure and uh, stand with you you won a couple of majors you're a former world number one i saw you won seven davis cup titles so so for you i'm assuming the team situation uh we're, we're because of black lives matter and uh, the trying of the fight for equality in sports uh, in general where it's racial or um the origin of sex stan you ran into Arthur Ashe, and I know you did too, Billie Jean, uh, but Arthur Ashe was part of the Davis Cup team that you were on, Stan, in, in uh, the late 60s, 1968, I believe. Uh, and Arthur was the first uh, black man to be part of the Davis Cup team. How did that come about? To, I mean, how did that feel for you? Um, because how did we know back then what was right and what was wrong? You know, Arthur grew up in Richmond, and his father was a policeman, and uh, he really respected... He was taught to respect other people, and, uh, and he was expected to be respected as well. And, and uh, we had some unfortunate situations over the years where, you know, like in Houston, he wasn't able to go into the, to the men's locker room. He had to go into the junior locker room uh, when we played the tournament there. And, and as we traveled around the world, you know, sometimes he was asked to do other things and go someplace else. And so, you know, uh, Arthur was a close friend. I know Billy Jean was close to him as well. But uh, when we played, we played Davis Cup together. We started the business together with uh, Charlie Passerell and Donald Dell and Bob Lutz. And uh, so we spent a lot of time together. One of the great things that USTA has done is that they named the stadium after Arthur and named the, the facility after Billy Jean. Uh, you know, they could have done it after, you know, some company and made a lot of money, but they, they chose... Uh, both Billy and, and Arthur to do that. So I, I was really excited to see that happen. And, and, uh, and Billy's done so much for the game. And uh, it is important. The team aspect is great. Playing with Arthur and Davis Cup, that was uh, nerve-wracking to play 
you know, and you're, you're really thinking about your guys on the team more than anybody else. And then I played <laughs> under Arthur. Arthur was a captain when uh, John McEnroe and, and Vitas were on the team and we played wow. uh, as, as he was a captain. So uh, we spent a lot of time together, you know, traveling, we went to Africa. We went to six different countries in Africa together and I was in the minority <laughs> uh, in all yeah. those different locations. And, and uh, it was, it opened my eyes and certainly being around Arthur was, uh, was great because he was a great leader. He, uh, he really felt strongly about uh, racial equality. It should be respect for everyone in what they do, whether men or women or, uh, you know, what, uh, what country they live in or what kind of economic situation they're in. And I was taught to respect a guy who was cleaning the locker room, who was yeah. the president yeah. of the United States, who was serving us and, and the woman that was doing that, you know, it's, it's everyone really should be respected. Uh, Billie Jean, um, stay in touch a little bit uh, uh, on Arthur. For you, the fight for equality, was that something you had in you as you became a tennis player or did that grow, make you grow as a person because of tennis? Uh, as 11 year old, uh, when I discovered uh, tennis, thanks to Susan Williams in fifth grade saying, do you want to play tennis? I go, what's tennis? I didn't have a clue. I played basketball. I was playing all team sports. And so I said, okay, I'll try it with you. We went to a country club because her father was quite wealthy. And I thought, well, this is very nice, but there's no way I'll ever get to play. We're also on a softball team. And she says to the coach, oh, I took Billy out to play tennis. And, and Val Halloran, the coach goes, well, they have free instruction here every Tuesday. Whoa, now we're talking. So I go out to Houghton Park with Clyde Walker, my first coach. And at the end of that first time, it was the second time I picked up a racket, I knew what I wanted for my life. I want to be the number one tennis player, you know, woman player in the world. And I told my parents, I was saying, that's fine. They didn't, they didn't get it. And <laughs> I, so, so anyway, I, I started playing. So fast forward to 13. Now I've been playing some sanctioned tournaments. I started that when I was 12. And, uh, and Stan will be, Stan knows this, it's the Los Angeles Tennis Club. That was our mecca of our sport in Southern California. It probably still is. Um, so I was going out there and I started daydreaming at 13. And I started realizing that everyone wore white shoes, white socks, white clothes, played with white balls, and everybody who played was white. And I asked myself, I asked myself, at 13, where is everybody else? Where is everybody else? And so I promised myself that day, that I would be a champion of equality the rest of my life. And I was praying that I could be number one because maybe they'll listen to me. I knew as a girl already, I was not gonna be as influential as easily, uh, but I knew it was gonna be a long haul and I didn't know if anything would ever happen, um, but it did slowly but surely. Um, but it was tough. Mm. I mean, it's been a mm. tough road. But, but let me take you to Wimbledon here. Wimbledon, uh, obviously 1975, you, Billie Jean, and Arthur Ashe won the title at the same time. Uh, remember, Arthur Ashe was wearing the USA Davis Cup jacket. Uh, Stan, to you, the ATP had, had just been formed, and Arthur Ashe was, very, uh, it was a leader in there. So were you. Um, how, first of all, how did that come about? And, and again, Arthur, did you always feel that he had these leader qualities, or did he build up his confidence from winning tennis tournaments well arthur uh was a leader he was a um a very calm leader he, he was uh logical he didn't get he didn't lose his cool he did a few times he played nastasi one time in the tournament nastasi acted like an idiot and walked off <laughs> literally walked off the court but uh <laughs> Billy, i Billy saw that match actually, in stockholm I mean, Billy won in Wimbledon Stockholm. again. Yeah. yeah, in Stockholm. Billy won Wimbledon again when I won Wimbledon. And so, yeah, so uh, you know, we were, we were there together too. But, but uh, when Arthur was, uh, you know, he was a thoughtful player. You know, he, was, he upset Jimmy Connors by, you know, using his head rather than his power, which was interesting because he had two different careers. In my, in my opinion, he had a – a career where he just hit the ball as hard as he could and, and kind of no brainers. And then he became a very thoughtful player and, uh, and worked on his uh, physical strength as well. And, and so uh, he, he, the last half of his career, he was a thinker on the court rather than just a basher. Uh, so that was, that was interesting. But so being a tennis player, what, what is it that we are, we are hoping our kids 
learn from tennis? Is it humility? Is it respecting your surroundings? What, what do you think, Billie Jean, is something that you learned from the game of tennis or that you've learned? I learned it from sports, really, uh, and tennis. But it's, it's about, first of all, always respect. My dad always said, and I, I totally agreed with him, always respect your opponent, no matter if you like them. And I thought that was great. Always respect mm. every human being, as Stan was talking about. Always be kind and good. Always um, try to do the best you can. And, but not just think about yourself. Think about others. Um, mm. You know, how are they doing? But Stan's correct. It's about respecting every human being, no matter where they come from or who they are, or what culture, what religion, what sexuality, whatever. It's really about respect. And you learn that in sports. You learn, mm. And tennis is a great sport for that. Because that's why we shake hands at the end, you know, over the net. It's, it's being out there, being by yourself or on a team. Tennis has an advantage that I think we've never, ever explored enough. Tennis is a team sport and an individual sport. And I think most children want to be on a team. They don't want to play against their friends. They want to be with their friends. And I think that's the way to grow the grassroots. I still think we should get children in team as they start. And they'll find their way if they want to be a crazy like Stan and me and they want to be, you know, Wimbledon champions or U.S. Open champions. Believe me, they ride. They, they, it'll happen because it's there. There's nothing like, obviously, that, you know, people winning big by themselves. But it doesn't have the same cachet that, that winning has with somebody else. And so ten, tennis and sports teach you to be resilient, respectful, always, you know, be able to bounce back. And also it teaches you leadership. It really does teach you leadership and followers choose leaders. Leaders do not choose followers. So I'm sure Arthur was pushed into his leadership positions as I was. The other players always would push me forward. I'd say, no, you do it. And they go, Oh no, we want you to do it. Well, eventually you either accept that role and really go for it or you, you don't, but I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I hadn't had the players with me, like in the original nine, uh, they, they don't get enough, they never get enough accolades. I always seem to be the one and it's not right. It took mm. nine of us. Um, it was a very difficult time because they had less and less tournaments for us, for the women. In 1968, when we started getting paid. We got paid a lot less. But what was really, really happening, really was horrible, is we were getting rid of tournaments. So we didn't have any place to compete. So the nine of us, when we joined, we signed a $1 contract with Gladys Here's the three things. These are the three things that we thought about because we knew we wouldn't make the big bucks. I told the players, if you expect applause, big money or whatever, don't do this. It's going to be a thing. Just do it because you want to for the future generations. And here's the three things. And the WTA is also uses these three things. Any girl born in the world, any place in the world, if she's good enough, would finally have a place to compete, compete, not play, compete. Number two, that we'd be appreciated for our accomplishments and not only our looks, because everything was about our looks in the old days. Yeah. Number three, to be able to make a living. And mm. we were able to do that thanks to Gladys Hellman and to Joe Coleman at Philip Morris. The three, those three elements were in alignment. You know, we got very, very fortunate. The stars were in alignment, and this is the only reason I can talk to you today. But mm. because of that effort, we do have a platform. That's the reason Osaka can speak out right now. She's the one everybody's looking to. But any tennis player has an opportunity because of the things that Stan did in 72 with the ATP. You know, I always wanted us to be at one organization in the 60s. We got rejected. We, we kept getting rejected. It's the only reason we did what we did. We were, it was last resort. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, f f professional female tennis players are, uh, I think, on average, the, the most highly paid of any uh, yes. professional female athletes. We're so number one. Incredible. We're, You're at number one. That's an incredible. We're number so one in thanks. Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine uh, listed the, it's, it doesn't mean it's great. We have a long way to go. But the, the top 10 uh, winning women athletes last year in monies off the court were all tennis players. This year, we were nine out of 10. They got soccer player got number 10. So we've well, always been the leaders the in women's sports. We're, we are the leaders in women's sports, period. Mm -hmm. You know, is the highest paid, isn't she? Uh, in, yes, in Osaka the was paid number now. one, and then uh, Serena yeah. came out number two this year. Yeah. Last so, year, yeah. So, 
Let me ask you uh, before I'm going to let you guys go. I know you have a uh, busy life still, um, which is appreciated uh, of all of us who came after you guys, because without you uh, paving the way for us, I would never have been able to make a living in, in playing oh, tennis. I think tennis is unbelievable sport. I mean, I've played, I've played so many sports my whole life. There's nothing like tennis. There's nothing like running and hitting that ball. And I stayed up until 2.30, I think, in the morning, calling your match against Lindell at the U.S. Open, Mots. Me, <laughs> oh, I think Cliff Drysdale and I were going, we were going back to London. And that match, I will never, ever forget as long as I live. That was one of the greatest matches I've ever watched in my life. You were amazing. I just want to put that in because I don't know if people <laughs> realize how great you are and how much you've won. I mean, you've won six, I think, Grand Slams. And not, very, not many guys have. I think you're one of six guys. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to say, you know, you guys have both won Wimbledon and, and you said something about being crazy, Billie Jean. I guess I wasn't crazy enough to be able to win Wimbledon then, uh, but you guys did. Thank you. You both. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to let you go. Billie Jean, thank you so much. And thanks for the inspiration uh, for everything that you do and have done, of course, and will do. And Stan, same thing. It's great to, uh, been great to get to know you, Stan. I hope to run into you soon uh, and take your money off the golf course. But thank you so much. And, <laughs> and this, uh, this show is uh, obviously dedicated to the late great Arthur Ashe, who's a trailblazer when it comes to uh, equality um, in the game of tennis and in life in general. So thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day and, um, and stay safe and, and good, good luck with, uh, with your next mission, both of you. Thanks, Billie Jean. Thanks, yeah. Stan. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for doing this good for Arthur. You. Thank you.